When a silent majority allows their nation to lose its common sense, that nation is lost, and you are allowing them to take your country away from you. Is it common sense to adore at the altar of multiculturalism? Read your world history. Not one nation has survived as a multiculture. It's the uniculture that is your strength. One country, one culture, one language. Is it common sense that 84% of the people want to make English the official language of America, but your majority political party espouses insanity, ignores the people, and says no? Is it common sense that 53 countries, mostly in Africa, have declared English to be their national language, and the party who declares we will unite you says press two for Spanish? Is it common sense to adopt your new national religion of diversity when the very word means disunity? We founded a country on similarities, not diversities. One country, one culture, one language. You cry out for unity, but is it common sense to continue to identify yourselves by your ethnicities and not your nationalism? White hyphen America, black hyphen America, Chinese hyphen America, Hispanic hyphen American, gay and lesbian hyphen American, the black caucus, the Hispanic caucus, the woman's caucus. You want unity? Change your language. Isn't it time once again we all became just plain Americans? Or is that too much common sense? Is it your new common sense now to stand up and cheer when a presidential candidate wants to hand over the health care system to that same government who has run Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and 12 other entitlement programs into bankruptcy? A government bureaucracy who can't run a railroad, your airports, secure your borders, or find 15 to 20 million illegal aliens. That same government that allows Islamic women to take their driver's license picture wearing a neck scarf covering their face because it offends their belief. What's next? Allowing the Ku Klux Klan wearing their hoods? Is it common sense to bankrupt the American treasury? Fighting wars for countries whose silent majority won't fight for themselves? Your debt is now $9.4 trillion. Is it common sense to continue to give away $9 billion of taxpayer money to unfriendly countries in foreign aid, including $2 billion a year to Egypt, who votes against the United States 80% of the time in the United Nations? All this while your own inner cities crumble. Forty percent of your high school graduates can only read or write at a fourth grade level. You have to import people from China and India for your high-tech industry because you haven't got enough smart people in America. And New Orleans and the flood victims of Iowa continue to be forgotten. This is madness. Lay down your misplaced global burden and rebuild America first. You can't support the world while neglecting your own country. Are you unifying the country with common sense when both of your presidential candidates cry out, we must show compassion for the 15 to 20 million invaders from south of your border? But not one word of compassion for the overburdened American taxpayer who is forced to subsidize the invaders by paying over $250 billion of their hard-earned money to establish America as the welfare department of a failed, corrupt foreign country. Are you unifying your country with common sense by sending out your utility bills and your social security checks in Spanish? Legal and illegal immigrants have no incentive to learn your unifying language because you make it easy for them not to assimilate. How many of you write in big letters across that bill, English only please, and send it back? Stop bending over backwards to accommodate every other culture but your own. Is it common sense to allow your activist judges to ignore your history, your culture, your declaration of independence, and every other founding document to remove God from public life? And endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, their creator, not the ACLU, not the will of the atheist, or the anti-Americans that sit on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco. Separation of church and state, yes. Separation of God from public life, never intended by your founding fathers. Is it common sense that the very political party who claims to be the party of the people and shouts, we will bring change, consistently stops all common sense legislation to secure your borders, establish workplace verification, and stop taxpayer money for illegals? They call themselves progressive global thinkers. We had another word for them in 1776. We call them traitors. This happened all once before. 232 years ago, it led to revolution and thousands of dead in the streets. It will happen again unless you take back America now. Join the grassroots movement of the second American Revolution, not of guns and violence, but pressure, pressure, pressure. 
on your non-representing representatives who created these problems in the first place. This is the most important phone number in your democracy, the congressional switchboard. Pick up your phone every day, every hour if need be, and call your representatives and tell them in no uncertain language to listen to the silent majority or else be thrown out on their hindquarters. It's toll free and your taxes pay for it. Would you stand by and watch your family perish when you have the power to save them? Of course not. Then why are you doing that to your own country? 1-866-340-9281. Perhaps you allow all this destructive, uncommon sense out of a distorted notion of tolerance. Remember what Aristotle said, tolerance is the last virtue of a dying society. You are tolerating the behavior that is destroying you. This wine was once rich, highly desired, and admired. But when you dilute it with enough water, it stops being anything. Take back America now. Choose to be part of the second American revolution. Pressure, pressure, pressure. No presidential candidate, no political party can save you now. Only an aroused citizenry will turn this uncommon sense around. And he or she who does nothing now is helping them to destroy America. My name is Thomas Paine, and I approve of this message. I only hope to God you will too.